Hello everybody and welcome to my studio. My name is Lana. I am an acrylic artist. Thank you so much for stopping by today. I hope you're going to grab your paints and paint along. We're going to be doing a fun summer themed whimsical type of painting. <laughs> Here it is. I have titled this one Dancing Dandelions. Um, it's a fun little project and look, I did the bokeh effect in the background. You know I cannot get away from that bokeh effect. Ever since I started painting it, I just love it. I find multiple ways to use it. So you can do it with or without the bokeh effect in the background. Totally optional, whatever uh, makes you happy. Uh, we're going to be using DecoArt Fluid Acrylics on this. So we're going to undercoat everything and then we're going to come back and put some glazes and washes. Uh, on top of these and uh, I think it's going to be a really really fun project. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel I hope you'll hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you know every time I post a video or go live and please give me a thumbs up for this video if at any point you are enjoying what you're seeing. All right let's grab our paints and supplies and let's get painting. All right, let's get started on this project. So I've got here my tavern sign, which is on my website, but you can use any surface that you want to. I have applied a coat of multi-purpose sealer with my damp two inch foam roller, which I left <laughs> by the sink, and then applied a coat of lamp black with the same two inch damp foam roller. So I am ready to go here. You can lightly sand it if you need to um, using a brown paper bag. We'll sand it down just fine and get any rough texture off of there. Okay, so I'm going to start creating a little bit of, I hope, fun stuff in the background here. <laughs> I'm going to put out some white and black paint here on my palette. And you guys uh, that have been painting with me for a while know how much I love the bokeh effect in the background. Um, so I'm going to attempt a similar type of background. Um, we'll see how it works. I don't know how it's going to work out, but um, I'm going to use one of these Dynasty. That's a Betty Bird brush. Let me grab my Dynasty brush. Okay, these are my two Dynasty brushes. You can get them at the Brush Guys. It's 200 series. These are like domed brushes. See, one's a little bit more rounded. The light, this, this one here is a little bit more rounded at the tip where this one's a little bit more flat. They're both soft bristles, uh, softer bristles, um, but a natural bristle. I really like these. Um, uh, they're just great for doing wonderful dry brushing effects. So I'm going to give you some options. Use whatever brush you have. Um, this is a Betty Bird brush. It is very, very similar to this one. Um, Betty Bird brushes are hard to find. I used to get them at Hofcraft. I don't know where you can get them now, so um, you might have to Google search for Betty Bird. This is a size 12. Uh, you could use a Mezzaluna, which is also a Dynasty brush. This size is extra large. Um, it's a little bit stiffer, and of course it's a Filbert style brush, so it's more flat. It's not uh, domed, but you can get great, great dry brushing with it. Um, I also have this brush as a Dynasty brush. Um, I'm not really sure what this brush is called. It's angled slightly like a, a deer foot, but it's not dense, you know, short like a deer foot. This has longer bristles, so it's great for scrubbing stuff in. It would work great for clouds, too. So, And then uh, this one is an option. This is a Royal and Langle Nickel um, half inch crafter's choice brush this is a pretty stiff brush not overly stiff like um, fabric brushes but a little bit stiffer like a stencil brush which you could stencil with this very easily i think patricia rawlinson sells these i'm not 100 percent sure um, mine is a little loose here at my it's like it wasn't crimped enough there so, um, we're going to give these brushes a shot. I don't know if they're going to do what I want, what I've kind of got thinking going on in my head. Um, I'm going to start out with my Dynasty brushes. If they don't work, then I may switch over to a little bit stiffer brush like that last one that I showed you. So, I'm going to start out with this one, and I'm going to take some, I'm using it dry, and I'm going to take some white and a little bit of black and make this gray color here. 
Okay, I'm going to tap a little bit of that off because I don't really know how much of this I want to put in the background. So I'm just going to start kind of <coughs> dry brush swirling this in the background. Um, let's just put it in a couple places. We're going to bring our black in and break this up so it's not quite so solid in here. So don't worry about how it's looking at this moment. Um, I just want to... Now that was a really hard, stark uh, area there. I pushed really hard on my brush and there was paint up in my brush. So it left that really hard, hard area in there. Alright, let's just do a little bit here and there. Okay, and don't worry about how it is looking at this moment, okay? So I'm going to load up a little bit more white in that brush and kind of work it in to blend it with that gray that's in there. So this is going to make a really light gray, okay? And I'm going to come in here and put a little bit of this on top. I am barely, barely putting this brush down to the surface. Um, you can tap. If you're using a little bit stiffer bristled brush, you may want to tap it. But let's add a little bit of this in here. I know it looks incredibly um, just like weird, weird, weird in the background, but I don't want you to get caught up in how it looks at this moment. <clears throat> okay, let's um, let's put some black in our brush here, just a little bit. I'm going to work that in. And so any place that you feel like, oh, I really like to break that up, let's just go in and add a little bit of black in there. We'll break it up and make it look more interesting. And a little bit more black, tap, tap, tap. I really want to break that really hard area that I put in right there. Break it up, a little more black, tap, tap, tap. I'm just using small amounts of black here and just breaking up some of this so it's not hard and crazy and any any edges that you have that just look too hard and rough um, this is a great way to break them up especially if you have a solid color background so you can break up any of those edges that you like and create that little bit of fun stuff going on in there and I think I might actually add a lighter one in here get that gray mix that I kind of started out with. A little bit more white. Still needs a little white. I've got black in my brush so I'm trying to tone that black down. Get some of that black out of there. I think I'm kind of thinking I want a little bit maybe in through here. I just feel like it needs it in there. And maybe we'll just put some little tapping. This can be like little pieces of that um, dandelion blowing off. We're going to have dandelions on here. Maybe blowing off into the... And we'll just kind of create that. All right, I'm going to come back with um, maybe this lighter gray and put a little bit of that in there. Just a little tap tap tapping and then come back in with your black if you need to take some of that down maybe you don't want those to be quite such a line you want it to break up a little bit just tap some black in there kind of break it up not make it quite so solid in there Okay, that's looking pretty good right there. I'm going to clean my brush out because I want to grab a stencil. Okay, so like I said, I love the bokeh effect. <laughs> I just really love putting it in my paintings. Um, so I'm going to use a stencil. I don't know if I'm going to use this one or a different one, but this is one I have available on my website. It starts at a quarter inch, goes up a quarter inch, all the way up to two inches. Now you can get on my website individual stencils that just have a certain size, like this one is two inch, this one is a quarter inch, and I have all of these sizes in individual smaller stencils, except for I think one and a quarter is one I may not have. <clears throat> I don't think I made one with that size, but 
you can get them that way. Um, I do have this stencil as well that is a varying circle stencil. So much fun. Some of these are not complete circles. Some of these are just like this one is a little bit oval shaped. I think I might use this one today. And uh, if you don't have a circle stencil, but say you have a circle template, these are drafting templates um, that you can buy at Hobby Lobby and um, Michaels. Mine came from Michaels. I've had them for a lot of years. When I bought them, you could buy two different sizes. I don't know if you can still buy two different sizes, but uh, you can use these for stencils as well. So whatever you have is gonna be great. But I'm going to use this one because I think it will be a lot of fun to use. And I'm going to take some white and blend it into my brush with that black. And then I'm going to remove the paint. I want these to be light and subtle. And so I'm just going to very lightly. Now you can add some, um, that might be a little bit too bright. I think I'm gonna add some glazing medium. I'm gonna put some glazing medium on the palette here. This will make my paint transparent. And um, I'm gonna work some of that paint out of my brush. I could grab another brush. <laughs> but this one still has a little bit of paint in it, so it's gonna make it a little bit fun to use. So I'm gonna load up with mostly glazing medium here. Just put some fun circles in there. I think I might go with a little bit more white into that, more glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap on my paper towel. And then just come in here and create some fun circles. Bokeh effect. I love, love, love this effect. So let's just have fun with it. All right, so I put a few in there. I want to overlap some, so I'm going to come back in with some more in here and try to overlap a few. I still just got a little bit of glazing medium and um, that light gray mix in my brush. Let's put one over here. And then we can overlap. We'll just keep adding and till we have our background just like we want it. And I don't worry that these circles are not perfect circles. That some of them maybe are a little oval shaped. I think that is super cool with this stencil. And I think it makes a... Um, really unique background. So just apply this wherever you want it. I think I might add a little bit more white in there and glazing medium. Tap, tap, tap. Now that I have a lot of glazing medium in my brush, I want to be a little bit more, try not to get them so bold and bright that they are incredibly forward because this is all background stuff okay so again just keep going this step totally optional I'm just a bouquet girl <laughs> just I just absolutely love the technique I think it is super fun I'm gonna tap those they got a little dark and uh, I'm not going to do tons and tons on here, you know, like I normally really fill up my complete background with these. I'm going to keep it a little bit less on this one. Touch it with my finger, kind of take it down. Make it a little more subtle. I think that is just such a fun background you guys I just can't even begin to tell you how much I love this background um, just super 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 fun all right I want to put a couple more maybe a little bit brighter ones may 
maybe a couple over here. I don't know that we'll end up seeing them because, um, you know, when we put our dandelions on here, all this stuff is going to be pushed way back. So just a little fun stuff here. I love how that glazing medium makes them transparent and um, just super fun in the background. So I think that's probably a good amount for a background. I'm not going to overdo it um, because I want our focal point to remain on our gorgeous dandelions that we're going to put on here. So I'm going to say I'm done with this brush. I do have, an, have that other one if I need to uh, add any of any more on here, but I think we can clean this brush and call this part of the background done. Okay, I've got my line drawing here, and um, I really don't want to put all these details in because I don't really need them. So what I'm going to do is slide my graphite under here. And I'm really just going to transfer on the stems and the leaves and just put a circle, um, maybe this circle in right here, and this circle in right here, because everything else is going to um, be based off of that circle. I might give myself a little bit of an idea of how big I want my circle to be, but I really only need some basic stuff here. So, um, we'll just add our details in like this. Let's see if I did that on the right side. So that kind of gives me an idea there. You ideally want to take down your line drawing. <laughs> so over here on this one here, I might do my calyx leaves. I don't know how they're going to end up being shaped, but we can kind of rough some in and then my shape for my dandelion and um, let's put some of our stems in here and our leaves we've got one here we've got one here and we really don't need to put the calyx in here to be honest with you um, we'll kind of build it as we go but if you feel like you need that particular item oh, See there, and my graphite turned over the right direction. So now I have to do all that again. So I'm just going to put a basic circle here and start my stem here. I'm not going to put all of that um, calyx stuff in there. I just need to know where the shape of my um, dandelion is going. Okay, so that's pretty much where everything's going. Then we'll have stuff blowing off over here as I have drawn it on here, kind of blowing pieces of the dandelion. So I think I better write which side is top on this. Okay, so on this particular painting, I'm going to paint everything in white. And then we're going to come back and add color on top of that white. So, um, you're just going to want a couple of small either filbert brushes or some round brushes. Really whatever um, brush you like to use. Okay, I've grabbed a few brushes here uh, that might be usable. A couple of these are exactly the same. All right, those are the same. Okay, so I've got a 4 and a 2 filbert here. I really think that 2 might be a little bit too small. Um, you could also go with a 4 either flat brush or chisel blender. This one's the flat one. See the bristles are longer on this one than this one. This one's shorter bristles. I prefer the shorter bristles. So that's a 4 and this one's a 6. And this is a 6 filbert. So I would say grab whatever brush you feel like you can make a small stroke with. I, I think I will try with the four chisel blender and see where that takes me. Okay, I'm gonna wake this brush up with some water and up 
put some fresh white out on my palette here. Um, any brand of acrylic paint that you have is fine. I am, again, using the DecoArt Americana Acrylics. Um, my dandelion, these three here are the full dandelion before the uh, blooms have died out and the you know, fluffy stuff is blowing away from the dandelion. So I'm going to first add in a couple of calyx in here. And just be creative with your calyx. They have all this stuff going on at the base of them, so okay, you can go ahead and paint the stem in. Everything's going in with white paint, okay? Just white, and then we'll come back and and actually that doesn't have to go into that, so we will whiten it to line it up with that though. Okay, so up here on the uh, flower itself, the first strokes you're going to make are going to come into the flower like this. They're coming out at us, so they're going to look more flat. Okay, and then we can start bringing them around our shape. They're not super long, well, that we can see. They kind of fit into the um, shape of the flower, so they could be longer than what we are actually seeing. But we're going to paint them all in like this. Just a little stroke work. bringing them down into that center right there. Okay? Now you can go to a smaller brush if you need to. Let's add some little calyx things here or whatever they are. There's always a lot of this green stuff at the base of one of these Okay, then we'll start with our ones that are coming at us, like this. These are more straight out at us, so they look more flat like this. can make a couple of rows here, and then we'll go up and around, creating our shape of our flower, whatever shape you want it to be, and then come in with a second row. And just keep bringing them in till you fill it the way that you want it to be filled. You can go back out here and add more if you feel like it needs more out there. We're just making a little cluster of strokes is all we're doing here. Okay. Let's make the stem for this one. I'm going to go ahead and paint these leaves in. Grab a little drop of water there. I know dandelions are not my husband's favorite flowers at all. <laughs> so. leaf here. And we can either bring it over or behind that stem. I think I'm just going to take it right over and make it on top. Don't worry about if you have graphite lines that are still visible. We will go in and 
erase all of those at the end. So, all right, so this particular flower here, we're just seeing kind of the top part of this flower. The rest of it is hidden. So we'll just make, continue making layers till we can't make any more layers on here. Okay, it's got a lot of stuff going on, these kind of flowers, so I don't tend to like to leave a lot of gaps uh, going on where the petals are. And then we'll put this one in. And I may come back in and do a second coat just to make this white really, really opaque, especially on the leaves and, and the uh, stems here because um, they really, uh, you know, need to be more opaque. Okay, so on our ones that are blowing away, we need this area here to be pretty solid. This is the center. And then right here. And I think I'll switch over to a round brush after I get my stems in. there to paint in. Make this one a little bit bigger. pretty good. We're getting some good base coats in here. I switched over to a round brush here. So in the center here, on this center thing right here, is where all of the, what would have been the yellow part, is now the white part. Um, we have all these um, things that come off of it that they attach to. So we're going to fill this in. I'm going to go around with one layer and then we'll come back in with a second layer. I'm just using a two round. You could use a one round, whatever uh, you're most comfortable with. Right. Come about, yeah, about to there, I think. Maybe one more. Okay, then we're going to do more. There's a lot of these things in here. Um, so we can put some more coming off of this. They're not super fat. Um, they're individual. We can come up on here and put a few that are up in here. That's just kind of giving us the illusion of all that, but they're really packed in there tight. Now, out here where they blow, you can decide, you can put your line drawing on and just mark a line where I have them on the line drawing. Or, let me grab my line drawing. I'm just going to look at it and kind of eyeball where some of these are going to be. So I'm going to put a little stem thing there. We'll have one. That's right here. This is this is going to be the fattest part of these. This is this part that's blowing off with it. We're going to have a couple that are going to be crisscrossed here. So we'll have one here and then one that's coming across it. Maybe one out here. Oh, that's really long. Doesn't need to be that long. Okay, we'll do the same thing down here. We're going to go all the way around this one though. We're just going to start with some little pulling out strokes here. And don't worry if you get like these out here. You, you know, you get them on there and you don't like them. Remember, we have a dark background, so we can go in and touch up. Even though we've, we've got, you know, those 
bokeh effect back there. We can still touch up in our background, not a problem. Okay, so this one's going to be pretty much all the way around. Oop, that one's really long. We don't need that long. <laughs> so just they are really tight in here. I mean, lots. It's dense, I guess I should say. It's really dense in here. Okay, and then on this one, I have a couple that are blowing out. So I want one there, one here, and one down here, I think, blowing that way. Um, I also, up here on this one, have one that's coming out up here. here kind of high. Okay, so those are the ones that are blowing around. Okay, um, so now we want a different brush here. Actually, while I still have this one, the stems, I'm going to make it a little bit light, but they need to come up all the way to that center. So put those in there. All the, we probably won't see any of this, but just in case, let's put that all the way up into the, the center of that. Okay, so now I'm going to go with a tiny brush, and uh, this is where I want you to use a really thin detail brush. So I have three of them here. These are a Dynasty brush. Uh, they're the Micron Detailers. Um, uh, I have a 10O extra long, which is probably the one I will use. I have a 10O detailer, so it's shorter. Try to get that where you can see them. So that one's shorter. And then we have a 5O extra long. Okay, I think I will use the 10O uh, extra long one. And so I'm going to load it with some water and thin my paint down a little bit. Make sure there's no water on my ferrule. These um, are very, very, we can come back in and fatten these things if we need to, which we may, but the stuff that blows off of a dandelion is so thin, <laughs> so fine, so detailed, okay? Um, so we're going to create our thin little line coming out here. Okay, a little bit more water in there. We want it to really flow off of my uh, tip here. And then we have all these little thin lines that come off of these. If you painted the um, sparkler with me, it's very similar, only these are very, very thin, very fine, and they stick out. come out off of there in thin, thin, thin lines, okay? Really fine, detailed lines. If you're a person that can paint cat stuff, this probably won't be any problem to you. Now we can put a little dot of white there. That's kind of where they're all connected. Um, so I'm going to continue with all of these out here. And a very thin line. Let me look at my line drawing here. This one goes this way. All right, then all these super thin, fine lines. That's why you want to have a good detail liner here. And create these. All this really, oops. That got a little fat there. We don't want the fat stuff. Let's try and keep it super thin. These are kind of, kind of long. Little, I want to call them hairs, but they're not hairs. But they are kind of long. So, and then I'm going to put my little dot kind of back there, kind of settle it in there, and we can make this a little bit higher up. Okay, 
And we'll do this one. I've got it curving this way. Kind of got a little curve going on with it. And then again, we're going to stroke all these things out. And they come out almost almost <laughs> straight out to the sides, really. Um, and then a little, little dot there. Okay. Dandelions can be painted several different ways. I'm trying to look at an actual photograph of dandelions and um, paint them in the way that I am seeing them. Super duper thin. A little dot right there. Might make these a little bit longer. Alright, this one I've got coming pretty much straight up this way. And then start your thin, thin stuff. Thin that paint down. You're not going to get super fine little lines unless you've, you've got it thinned down, okay? Alrighty, let's see. So it comes over here and goes this way a little bit. That one's got a lot of long ones on it. Grab a little more water and mix into my paint. And then this one comes up. And then this one. This one going up, out this way. A little dot there. Okay, I'm going to go down here and do these down here. Let's see how I drew them. This one's going up this way. You really got to be up on the tippy toe of your brush. Get these super fine lines and don't push hard on your brush. That's how you're going to get those thick, thick lines. a little bit better. Right, a little dot here at the base. 
Then this one I've got coming this way. And you can make yours go in whatever direction you want them to go. So there's some good stuff going on. Now we need to repeat all of that in our cluster of our little flowers here. I'm going to do one. I'm going to do this one. And then this one will be done the same way. Just make it as big as you want it. I'm going to put some more white out. Fresh white. Grab some water. Then some down. A nice little puddle of inky consistency paint right here. I'll wipe my ferrule off. And load my brush. Now the first thing that I want to do is just come in here and create a bunch of very thin lines coming from this center. Super thin. Don't worry about how many of them are here. You do need a lot because there's a lot of this stuff going on. And ooh, that one's really fat. We don't really want fat ones. We want to keep them super thin. Super, super thin. I'm going to try and bring them out all the way to that line that I drew because that's how big I want it to be. So if they're not coming out that far, let's go in and make sure that they do. That's really thick. Let's not, let's not have a thick one like that. That's super thick. All right, so I've got them all kind of coming out into that circle. You want to try and keep them really as straight as you can because these really are straight things. So um, we're just going to start adding some layers of the little tiny, tiny fine hairs. Now there's going to be some that's going to be back in here because um, that's the back side. So we will see some back in there. So you can put some in here. Try not to fill it up so thick that you uh, can't tell that there's more than one layer on here. That's a little too much there. So we'll just go back in here and create some stuff going on down here. This is in the back, back, back. Let's create a little layer of this. We can come back in and add some strokes on top if we get too carried away with our um, with our stuff in the background. Ooh, that's a lot of paint on my brush there. I don't need that much. So just. Um, few down in here that we can that we'll be able to see when you've got it where you feel like it's good then we're going to go out to the outer ones and that's when we're going to start putting in those super duper fine little hairs coming off these end pieces and just work one at a time all the way around
This is really pretty. I mean, um, dandelions are pretty full. So, you know, just keep working your way around it. And I would just do your first layer out here on the outer edge. And remember, they, they kind of come straight out from the edges. So and then you can go back in and add some in between after you get some of these outer ones done. But it'll be pretty dense. I'm going to go in and add more. <laughs> I'm not going to do that. But I am going to go in here and add more behind some of that. And for now, I'm just working on getting this stuff out here. Don't just try not to get too crazy. Goodness, I picked on my brush there. Thin, thin lines. Those are starting to get a little thick. Let's keep them thin. Don't get too carried away here. in here. Like a second row almost. I mean, you could use a stencil <laughs> for your dandelions if you don't want to paint, but this is an excellent um, uh, technique for getting your detail liner out and learning some really good control of your detail liner. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and go in here and add a second layer into some of these because this really needs to be on top. And we definitely want it to look like there are ones coming out of here, out of those things, because that's what they are. They're the ends of the um, stuff that's flying off of the dandelions. Okay, um, I'm going to go in here and make it a little bit more dense. over here. Okay, so that looks pretty pretty good there. Um, I like how that looks. So I'm going to go do this one. I'm going to try and come out all the way to my shape out here. This might be a little high here, so I might bring it down just a little bit. Then when you've got all of your first coats in, go and erase your graphite lines and then come back and apply second coats where you need it. I'm going to apply probably second coats on all my leaves and stems and probably on these flowers so that when I put my color on there, the color will really pop uh, from that white. Now we have uh, one more thing that we'll have to do to this center. So go ahead and get um, all of your 
base coats on first and second whatever you're going to be doing and um, then we will come back and work on those details okay I'm finishing up my second coat here on my um, ones down here I just wanted to show you that you don't have to be exact right on that stroke you're just wanting to get a little bit more opaqueness going on in there so just a little hit here and there is going to um, help that flower look a little bit more I'm getting as close as I can to the strokes that I put in before but not worrying if I don't get right on them so we're just kind of giving a little more opaque stuff here and I've already done my stems and leaves so we are good there you can add a little bit more into your centers here if you need them and like I said the stems get a second coat Opaque, and then I'm going to go in and erase all of my graphite lines. Uh, then we're going to come back and add some little dots into our centers here um, and then move on. Okay, we need a few little dots of uh, white in the center of our of these here. We can't see the centers of these so I'm just going to take my little detail brush and we want it dot all these teeny tiny little dots. These are actually where the um, these things, all these petals that are blowing off of, they all connect in here so if you want to put a few along the edge kind of show that some of those are connecting. The rest of these are just empty spaces where those petals used to be. In a little bit, maybe you can see that a little bit better. See all those dots on there. So I'm going to do this one. Just put some little dots in here. I'm going to put some out here around the edge where some of these things are showing connected still because I do connect to those little dots okay I'm trying to get a shot where you can see the dots a little bit better there you can see them a little bit better in that shot okay all right so that's got all of our base coating uh, stuff done. So now we're ready to add in some more color. Now before we move on to color if you want more effect in your background you can go in and add that. I think I'm gonna go in and add a little bit more bouquet here and maybe right through here because I may want to wash some colors onto those I'm not sure uh, but I'd like to have a little bit more in there. Okay one thing that I do want to do here is on this top one. I want a few of these coming out back here. You know that we can see a few of these. They're not connected. I mean they're back behind but they're not fully visible. This is where before we start adding color on here you want to go in here and make sure you've got all of the details that you want done in here because once we start adding color um, 
we can't go back and redo any of these details so we want to make sure that they're good to go you're happy with how they look a look see let your eyes scan it take a picture of it go and look at it in a mirror uh, you'll see all the places that you want to fix when you do that that you want to add something to that you want to take away from that you want to um, bring more forward or push more behind Let your eye roam your piece and fix anything that you want to fix. Okay. This actually needs to come on that side of that a little bit like it's growing weird okay so yeah just uh, let your eye I highly recommend you either take a photograph and really look at the photograph or go stand in front of a mirror because those are the times when you're gonna see everything that you don't like about your painting or that it is missing something somewhere I'm gonna go ahead and put the center vein in These, just some straight white paint here. Not thinning it down at all. Okay. All right, I think it's looking pretty good. I think we are definitely ready to add some color in here and get this uh, all perked up. I did a little bit more bouquet in the background and I think I'm happy with it now. I want to tell you at this point, if you just like the black and white look, black and white and a little bit of gray in there look, you could actually be done with it at this point. You don't have to do anything else to it that you don't want to, but we are going to add a little bit of color to it. Okay, I'm going to give you a tip that if you're unsure about adding color to any of your projects, okay, I highly recommend before you do that, you take some uh, varnish. This is a soft touch varnish. You want something that is a flat or a matte varnish that won't put any gloss on your project whatsoever so you can paint right over it. So I've got the so, so tough, so soft touch varnish. I've got a damp sponge and I'm going to apply a coat or two on here um, and let it dry. And then I can paint right over. And if I don't like it, I can remove it very easily with a damp rag or baby wipe or something. But this will seal the paint that we've already put on here. So if you do something on top, that you don't like, then you can just remove it. Um, if you are designing, this is a great tip to know that as you are building your design, you think, oh, I want to add that in there, but I'm not sure I'm going to like it. Varnish it. If you don't like it, I, I recommend two coats. That way, if you do have to remove it, you're not going down into the paint. Um, but varnish it, apply your paint, and if you don't like it, very easily very easily removed so I'm gonna get this coat dry and I'm gonna apply a second coat and then we're gonna start adding some color on here okay I'm thinking I don't know I've done a couple of my bouquet bubble things in the background I'm thinking I want to add color to them and just a couple places on the flowers not the whole things I kinda like them being white Ugh, I don't know we'll see I'm gonna add I am adding turquoise no, what am I? cobalt cobalt teal hue which is my absolute favorite 
color in the media line. So I'm adding a little bit of that in here. Just on like half of the circle. Ooh, 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 ooh. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I'm if this is going to be what I want or not. But I can remove it, so I'm not too worried. I just not a hundred percent sure of what I want to do. Let's add some color on our flowers. Um, let's just go in here with a little bit of the transparent yellow oxide. I'm going to thin that with a little bit of water. And we'll start adding a little bit of this into our flowers. You know, kind of down in where the center is. I'm just going to wipe my brush off and go into that brighter yellow, which is Hansa yellow. We want to stay on the white. If you get it in the black, it's not a big deal. You can go and touch it up. But we don't really want our color to be out there in the background. Remember, you have some calyx down here, so we don't want to be painting those in. We're working on just the dandelions. Try actually, let's see. We don't really have a burnt sienna. I don't have a burnt sienna. If they make one in this color, I don't know. But the yellow iron oxide the closest I've got to it. Ooh, okay, That's pretty dark in there. Don't want it to be quite that dark, so let's come back in with some of this bright yellow. I'll just kind of blend that out a little bit. We'll lighten, put a little white on the tips here in a minute. But this, um, so pretty. This um, paint that I can't think of the name of. <laughs> uh, media paint. So that was the Hansa Yellow Medium. I did a little bit of the transparent oxide there in the center, but you can't really see it. Let's go down here and work on some calyx. We'll make these darker, but there is a lot of it going on um, around a dandelion. So this is a light color here. This is yellow-green light. So we'll just do our calyxes with this. Because this is more transparent paint, having that white underneath definitely going to help. Okay, we can take this green and mix a little bit of that yellow in with it and lighten it up and we'll go down the stems, make them bright. They are pretty, pretty bright stems. The leaves are pretty dark though, so. We want a little bit of that up in there, but we really need our white stuff to stay on top, so if we get into that, we're going to go and apply the um, white paint back over when we're done with all this green. We want a little bit in there, a little bit. Okay, um, our other leaves, I'm going to mix the Viridian and that uh, yellow-green light. Just brush mix them. 
Getting a dark green on here. these in. I'm just using a round brush. It probably would be much easier if I went to a <laughs> flat brush or a filbert brush to paint these in. because they're on top of this leaf. Definitely should have went to a flat brush here. Let's do our yellow on this other one. This is our hands of yellow medium. Put a little bit more of that out. Just takes a little drop of this paint, so don't put tons of it out. You just need a little bit. I'm going to grab a little bit of that yellow oxide and put some of that in here just to give a varying color so it's not all so dark or so, so light. And down here I'm mixing the two yellows, the yellow oxide and the Hansa yellow medium and getting a little bit more of a golden color down here. Which I kind of like. I might do the other ones with some of this mix. But for now we're just going to stick with it. So there is just one layer of paint. Look how opaque that is. I mean so awesome. So awesome. Stuck my hand in that one. Okay, so these little things that come out of here, they're going to be my struggle here. Um, because I don't have all the right colors that I need here. So I'm going to take my Burnt Umber and my Quinacridone Burnt Orange and mix them together. We need kind of a brown color. Maybe I'll add some gold in there too. And get kind of a. We'll see how this works. This all needs to be in here. On these. You need to see that they're individual. And then all these ones that are flying off, they get their color on their um, bases. Okay. 
Now you can just use regular acrylic paint on this, but I like how um, transparent these colors are. And since I really want to keep a lot of that base coat stuff going on, I thought these would be super, super fun. Alright, let's take that paint. Now you can add, you can grab your little detail liner if you want. And let's go over all these little dots in here. Just putting a little color on the dots you've already made. Okay, they get that little color in the center there. I think we'll come back in and stroke our white uh, things coming out of them so that they they stay nice and white. Um, I want them to be a little bit darker. So that's our first layer. Um, we obviously have to come in here and darken and shade and do all that stuff. Um, but I'm going to try doing it all with just a paintbrush. I'm going to try, uh, you know, just a round brush or, you know, something like that so that I can blend my colors. I'm not actually doing the shading and the highlighting uh, like typically, kind of like I did out here on these, um, which I think I should do another one over here. Um, so that is my goal. Okay, I wiped all my blue off the background. It just was too competing. I didn't like how it was competing. So well, we're going to skip the blue. <laughs> all right, let's move on to adding some uh, shading on our calyx. Uh, I got another color out, Thalo Green Blue. This might work more on the leaves. Um, I think we'll mix it with our bright green which is uh, da, 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 yellow green light and get a little bit of a shading color and let's see if we can shade a little bit on our I call them calyx but looks pretty good. It'll definitely be darkening, but this is a good, good start. Just using a small chisel brush here. It's a number six. Keeping this close up to our little flower petals here. paint really goes a long way on your brush. You need very little and it can get a lot done. Alright, so we'll definitely be um, doing some more to that. Let's move on to, I think I'll work on the leaves. Now I'm going to take that Viridian Green and I actually think I'm going to add some Carbon Black out here. Carbon Black. Or you can use your black you used in the background. Just something to darken those that green up. And I think it needs a little bit more black in there. That might be purple. Wrong color. I dipped into purple instead of black. So let's go into black and viridian. And we're just making a dark green here. Put some down 
down here at the base and this one around our petals here. Right now I'm just doing kind of at the base of them. We're gonna got paint too far on my brush here. That's what happens when you use little brushes. The paint just goes gets too far over sometimes. one. You can pick a side to go up if you want to go up one of the sides of your leaves and shade. On the... Whichever side you want to shade on. Obviously I'm not doing mine the same so <laughs> we'll, just, we'll just mix it up. <laughs> All right, let's go down the center for for a vein. I keep dipping into my purple because it looks like black. Oh, way too much black. Black and here Viridian, and we'll create our center vein here. Just using the chisel edge there. We did the we did the vein with the white paint so it kind of stands out a little bit which is nice all right let's add a little bit of color to our stems we want our stems to be a little bit more bright so I think we're gonna add more yellow onto them so let's go in with our yellow which is the hands of yellow medium and we really want to keep these go to a round brush I still have this chisel brush or yeah this chisel blender brush in my hand we want to keep these pretty bright so I'm just going in with some of this yellow we're gonna come back in with our um, white and do some more in here on top because um, it needs to be brighter all right, so while we have this yellow, I'm going to take it and mix it with um, uh, the yellow green light, I think. We'll see. Just a tiny bit of that yellow green light. And we'll see if this is a good highlight color for our leaves. Yeah, we're not going to see a whole lot of it, but I think it'll be enough. Because, um, you know, you've got, you've got pure pigments here, so... It's going to stand on top. It'll stand on top at least for the first coat. And um, then we can do more. Definitely need darker on our calyx. Um, so we're going to work on darkening those real quick. Okay, let me wide angle out a little bit here. All right, so I'm going to go back over and finish these yellow flowers, the stems and the leaves, before we work on our white or dead flowers. <laughs> okay, so um, on the yellow part, I'm going to take a little bit of just our Snow White. Now you can get the um, the uh, media line white out if you want to. Um, I did not get it out, so I'm just going to go with my Snow White. It's perfectly fine to mix paints and we're going to put a little bit of white maybe that had too much water in my brush a little bit of white on some of our tips not all of them we're just going to do a kind of wander around the flower and do a little bit of hit and miss kind of well that one looks like it's catching a little light so or if you can't tell if you know you've got a separation of a um, certain 
you know, petal on here, then this is a, a good way to get a little bit of a separation on there. And just put a little white on a few of them, not all of them, okay? We can do a few of these that are coming more forward towards us as well um, because they might be catching a little bit of the light. Okay. And then we can also add a little bit of dark down kind of in that center area of the um, transparent oxide. Now this is very transparent so you know it's going to be a very light color. I'm not going to see... I mean it's it's not going to make a lot of a difference. You know what I mean? It's going to give, you can see it's giving a little bit of the golden color in there, but it's not um, taking over. So I think I'll just go ahead and add some of this in here to this one and just pity pat it around, wipe my brush off and kind of smooth it out. And now we'll go in and do the highlighting on this one with our white. Just a few tips. I don't want to do them all. Just pick a few. They're the ones catching the light a little bit more. So don't feel like you have to put it on a ton of them. Some of these that are kind of poking out towards us, well, they'll catch some light. Go ahead and do some white on this one down here while we have it on our brush. Just a little bit. Whew, or a lot. That's a lot. And this is where we can separate our little petals a little bit more. highlight on there super cute and then this one down here we can also add a little bit of that transparent oxide just down in here at the base just pity pat it on there okay super super cute super cute okay let's work on our uh, calyx now um, I think I want to take that green that we basted it in, which was that um, yellow green light, and add some more of that on here. And then we'll darken at the base and we'll be done with them. Just out here on the tips. And then I'm going to take the Viridian green. So oh, we're at a lot of that in here at the base. I, I can go back to my little flat brush and do it that way. And if you want that even brighter, you can definitely brighter it. Um, let's see. On the stems, we're going to take the Thalo Green Blue. And let's see. I think we're going to line down this side of it. Wipe some of that off. I don't need a ton of this. I just want to get a little dark edge here. We don't want to lose all of that lightness, but we do want to see where we have two that come together here. And we'll go down this edge. I'm going to come back with some yellow and brighten that, so whoop, wipe some of that off. We don't need it so bold and so bright. Just coming down that one edge there. I'm not going all the way up into where the where it meets into the center because that is 
too much. So now we can take some Hansa Yellow Medium or Hansa Yellow Light. I think I'm actually going to take a little Hansa Yellow Light here and whoo, go back up this edge. Keep it bright. These are transparent colors, so they're not going to take away from each other. They're only going to enhance each other. This is very bright yellow, but very, very transparent. So, you know, if you want to go in and add some of this really bright yellow into your dandelions and make them even brighter. You can. You could also add some orange in here if you wanted some orange in your dandelions. So we can add that in there. Uh, I've got to finish this calyx and I'm still not liking that calyx up there. I just feel like it needs more darkness. So we're going to mix a little black in there with either the thalo blue or the thalo blue green or the um, viridian. It doesn't matter which one you use. Just pick one and mix a little bit of black in there. much better. So we'll go with this color on here. I'm really filling a lot of the um, uh, calyx up with this color. Not leaving a lot for that light color to show through. And I, didn't, I don't think I put a second color of the light on here so I still want to do that. light color which is the the yellow green light that was our base color and we'll put a little bit of this on here not too much we definitely want to cover up those white tips though if we have some white tips we want to cover those up Okay, that looks pretty good. I like the stems. I like the calyx. Um, I like that brighter yellow on there. That looks good. I'm going to get all the way to the edge here. I'm taking just a little bit of that yellow green light and smoothing out here. On the leaves, they're pretty much done, but I do want to try and brighten them up a little bit. So I'm going to take the Hansa Yellow Light and put a little bit of lightness on them and brighten them up on that, wherever you want to highlight on your leaves. This is really a pretty um, easy project here. So we've got our light dandelions. I think they're pretty done. Um, you can come back and add a little more white on the tips if you want. We might do that, but I'm not sure. <laughs> um, over here, I've got my color a little bit dark uh, where I don't want it quite that dark. So I'm going to take the yellow oxide. My little dots are a little darker than what I want. And I'm going to see if I can lighten them up with this transparent yellow oxide. I might have to put a little wash of white over them to kind of tone them down, but these should be more yellow, not quite so dark. Ooh. 
That was a lot. Lots of paint there. I definitely want them to be more yellow. Not quite so dark. So I may wash over those with a little bit of white here in a second. So I think our yellow ones look pretty good. I think um, I think I could darken in the shadow areas though. The radiant and black. Maybe just a little bit more black. Just put a little bit there. Those look pretty good. I like them. They look good. They look good. All right, so we're going to go back over here to our um, things here. We need uh, more white in here. Um, so we need to definitely bring some strokes out of these. We don't want them to just look like they're in there all alone they connect to these white things so we want to look like they're connecting to them so these are all the fine details that really make your artwork stand out So the other thing we want to do up here on these, well, let me go down here and do this one, get the connections to these brown areas that we put in here, or kind of reddish color areas. All the way around, make it look like they're connecting, which is great for adding another layer on top. We need another layer on here. to look more real. Alright, so now let's add some more of these on top. Use a little fine strokes. Keep thinning your paint as you need to so you can have nice thin stuff going on here. These um, are really it's really, really dense out here on the outer edges of um, dandelions. It's super, super dense. Nice and fluffy dense. So keep those layers going until you feel like you have a nice... I have to keep adding water to my paint as I, you know, use up the area that's... I'm going to go in like I'm creating a second row in here. Super, super dense. But you still should see all these individual little strokes in here. build layer upon layer, the more forward layer should start looking a little bit brighter, a little bit wider. You 
see how much more dense this one looks compared to this one down here. Looking good. Okay, that looks super good. Let's go down and do this other one. We're almost done with this project. So we're just going to go around it. And add another layer on the outside edge. And then come in and add another layer next to that one, moving in a little bit. Still keep them nice and thin. They are super thin, super fluffy. I know it sometimes can be kind of hard to keep thin, thin stuff. But you can do it. right over our stem on that one. Okay, so we've got a first row there. Let's add a second row in here. paint so it's a good thing I'm almost done here. I want to work on the center here. I want to put a little bit of white in there. I'm just going to brush it in and smooth it out. Brush it in and smooth it out. Okay, let's put a little bit of a highlight maybe. Depends on how Oops. Depends on how um, how thin yours are. If you can even do this, how small they are. See, I've got some white paint where I don't want it. So I think I'm going to go in here in between some of these and add some a little bit of white. I'll rub it out with my finger. Okay, the center of this one, not looking how I want it to look. So let me examine that a little bit. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. I'm not really sure what to do here with this center here. Um, I need to make it look a little more raised up, I think. So I'll try that with some white. Highlight over here on this side. I don't know that that's going to help a lot, but because I have it opened now, if I wanted to make it more closed up, I could bring in some more of these things out of there and then create. And I think I might just do that because. I think I like the idea of it being more filled in on this one and that one blowing away more. So I think I'm going to do that. So let's create our little center areas that we did with a little bit of the red and the burnt umber. So we'll just add some of these on top here. using a different brush than I used before, so they are not. Okay, so I just added those in the center. So when you do it, 
when you're doing it. <laughs> Maybe you just want to keep that um, without the little dots. I mean, you can add a few in there. So now I'm just going to pull some of these out and bring them up. And this will make it look a little bit more like a full round um, puff of <laughs> dandelion. You know what I mean? You know what I'm trying to say, don't you? A dead dandelion. All right, let's add some of the stuff on here. All the way around. Put some down here on top of the center because these are everywhere. Let's make this one look a little more dense. So we won't see much of that center at all, so we'll see some of the brown peeking through, so we definitely need to have that brown in there, okay? Oh, that looks good. Alright, thin, thin lines if you can make them. Some of mine are getting a little bit chunky monkey. Okay, that one looks much better, I think. Much better. Okay. I need to erase that little mark there. Oh, I should have left that white paint on my brush. I think I want to try and do a little white highlight on the stems. And we can put a little bit of this on our leaves. Really, whatever, whatever you like. If you don't want to do this part, then definitely don't do it. Any steps that you you don't want to do, go ahead and leave them off. Sure, it's your, it's yours. <laughs> it's yours. If you think it's looking good the way it is. All right, so I didn't do anything to my um, bouquet in the background. I left it, I removed all the color that was on it, and I left it just the white, or the light grays, you know, on there. Let me remove this little bit of paint that's right here. Should be able to, because I have varnished this, so that should come off very easily. And then I've got some else there. I'm not sure what that is. So brown or something. It might be underneath my varnish. I don't really want to come off. Okay. I think that turned out pretty cute. Wide angle out so we can see it. You could put some words over here, whatever you like, but I think that's super, super cute. What a cute little project. A fun, fun project. I think it turned out great, you guys. So if you like this video, please be sure and give me a thumbs up. Please subscribe. Please share. Please comment. Do it all. <laughs> I need it all, and I appreciate you all so incredibly much. You have no idea how much I appreciate the people who watch my videos. I am beyond grateful. So, um... I hope you guys paint this one and uh, head over to my website for either the packet or line drawing. I'm not sure what this is going to be yet. I think it's going to be a packet because um, I did have a lot of written instructions typed in here. So um, I hope you're going to enjoy this one and I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye.